So, so interestingly, I think this dovetails nicely into the whole idea of okay, there's weight loss and then there's maintenance. So how does one determine what carbohydrate level would be right for people on maintenance? And how does one ultimately effectively reintroduce carbohydrates on maintenance if they've been a car on a carbohydrate-restricted diet? Let's, let's reverse engineer that. Because oh, in maintenance, it means your weight is not changing day to day, week to week, or even year to year. That means that the fuel coming in eventually has to be equivalent to the fuel being burned. Um, so if a person is reasonably carbohydrate tolerant when they get to the point where they want to hold their weight stable, you can introduce carbohydrates back to the point where they begin to bump up against the point that the, 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 their their level of intolerance. So as, as Jeff implied, if you measure blood triglycerides, and they started out with high triglycerides, they lost considerable weight, their, their, their blood lipoprotein pattern got better, and then you retest the triglycerides at, say, three months into maintenance, and you see the triglycerides coming back up, they've probably gotten a little bit above where they should have been. They need to dial down in grams per day of carbohydrate. And that might be in our experience, for people who have significant weight to lose or signs of metabolic syndrome, the upper end of carbohydrate tolerance for those people, even when they're normal weight, may be 100 to 150 grams per day. Um, most of those people should not go back to a high carbohydrate diet if they'd gotten in trouble on high carb before. So if 100 grams per day of carbohydrate, that's 400 calories a day. Now, mo a, most low carbohydrate diets, in fact most diets that are good for human beings are going to be moderate in protein. This idea that high carb, I'm sorry, that low carb equals high protein is a, is a, a, a dangerous myth. Yeah. Um, because we humans don't burn protein very well as fuel. If you have a dog, your dog is very good at burning protein for fuel. But we humans, moderate protein. So for me, maybe 100 to 150 grams of protein per day. It's about four calories per gram. So that's between 400 and 600 calories. I don't want to get too technical. But let's say I, I, I don't, but I'm over here eating 100 grams of carb a day, that's 400 calories. 150 grams of protein, that'd be 600 calories. 1,000 calories. But I'm you know, uh, 75 kilo, you know, 165 pound guy. I'm still pretty physically active and I burn over 2,500 calories a day. But between the, even the, 100 grams a day of carb and the, the 150 grams of protein, I've only got 1,000 calories. The rest has to come from fat. So you introduce back carbs to the point of carb tolerance. You keep protein moderate because we don't, humans, A, protein costs a lot, B, we don't feel well if we eat way too much of it. So protein in moderation, and then the remaining fuel that you need for maintenance will come from a healthy mix of fats. Uh, and that's how we put together what we have termed a well-formulated carbohydrate-controlled or carbohydrate-restricted regimen that allows people not just to lose weight reasonably easily, not easy, but more easily than on other dietary approaches, as shown in Chris Gardner's study, but then how one can make it last for decades, not for six months or so.